Hey, we're back with another Red Scroll podcast. I'm Rick. I'm Josh. I'm Sean. Sean's here. Sean. The boy Sean. The boy. The original. The original boy. <laughs> Never duplicated. <laughs> Tried to. Often imitated. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> Shout out to Karen who went home to Gary tonight and Shout didn't, didn't want to be on the mic. Sean B. is our first ever employee. It's true. Fun fact. I worked for records in the beginning. And then he got fired from his day job. I was stealing a lot from the Michaels, and then I got ratted on, and I lost my job. So we hired him full time. Perfect qualification. Oh, you're stealing from your job? You're hired. <laughs> All right. So if we're long and the short of it, though, is that Sean left about five years ago and moved to Austin, Texas, and yeah. now works for End of an Year, um, which is a large record store down there in uh, Texas. Austin. Yeah, that's true. So we're talking to Sean of End of an Year and not of having worked here for a little while. Well, kind of a long while. I was here for like seven years. Yeah, it's a long time, I guess. Yeah. I've been here longer than you, though. You've been here longer than, <laughs> here, you've been here longer than me. Um, so, yeah. So, this is going to be less of an interview and more of a discussion about uh, record store topics, and especially one that uh, came out today on the Billboard website via yeah. a story that was something that previously we were told we couldn't talk about. Be yeah, because it came through an email whose footnote, it, it, or the footer, rather, is a, like a privacy. A privacy agreement that we signed, but I don't think we have to abide by that anymore. I mean, because we're not talking about the email now, we're talking about the article, <laughs> so it's different. Exactly. It's public. Boom. It's fine. It's public. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Good so, use of words. So but we'll, anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. What are you listening to, Rick? Tell me about that. Uh, I'm going to start. Music. Beep. Liz Harris has a new album under the name Nivhek or Nivek or Nivhek or I don't know. N I V H E K. Liz Harris is grouper also. Um, this new one. Really good. Burp. If you like grouper and, and you want more and drawn out. And you're wondering why there's a new name for this. I mean, it, I'm it's, in the same ballpark. It's slightly why? different. It's slightly it's more out there. It's very much in the same vein. Though. It's in the same vein. Um, but it's cool, and it's definitely on my list of things. Serpente, Parada, on Ecstatic. It's uh, some Lisbon, Portugal, experimental electronic stuff. Jungle. coordinates.
and uh, that's exactly what it sounds like, and you probably already know about it, because it was especially big news a few months ago when they announced it, but it's songs Prince wrote for other people, and it's fun to hear him say his name is Sheila E. That's fun. Your part. <laughs> Among other parts. They also put Nothing Compares to You on there, which uh, he didn't really write for Sinead, but she did cover it. Um, but yeah, that's cool. And then uh, Linnea Aspera, Preservation Bias on Dark Entries. It's just kind of a collection of stuff that they hadn't put out previously. Um, and Dark Entries made a post about this one saying it's their biggest ever pre-order so that was pretty neat for them really that's their biggest pre-order yeah i mean that linnea esper like stuff didn't catch a hold like the first time as a pre-order but they've sold many pressings of it since yeah and so i'm sure just on the strength of many of those so that's their biggest record their biggest record on pre-order putting it out that's and true right now it's out right now it's as out you're listening and it's to probably this, doing it's real well <laughs> oh man i hope hope it's not sold out but this is <laughs> this is after the release show with municipal waste hopefully that was a banger oh man hopefully great. they burned the ballroom down <laughs> oh man they smashed every puppet r.i.p ballroom <laughs> <laughs> they smashed every puppet at the ballroom they brought the puppets back <laughs> There was a trampoline, and Mark got real drunk oh, and man. cried out in the parking lot. People went upstairs to the <laughs> office and threw, threw papers. Printers off the top. This, fireworks. These are things that may or may not have happened at other shows in years past. I have no idea what On they're talking Sunday. about. I definitely wasn't there. A Sunday afternoon. <laughs> fireworks. <laughs> Indoor. <laughs> Before another show that had to happen later that night, put on by the same people. <laughs> real fun. Anyway, who knows what we're talking about, because we don't. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yep. that's everything on my list. <laughs> You pretty much covered the Nivhek, Nivhek, Nivhek? Nivhek? I don't Nivhek? Know. What is the H silent? What you, what's your call? I don't know. Cool. <laughs> okay, good input. Great yeah. record. Check it out. <laughs> uh, Heelung. Futha? Futha? I, I, no idea. Who knows? Not. But it's even more funny because I would say that this record is more primal than their last recordings. So it's they're barely human at this point. They're just like growling at each other, pretending to be like big cats or wolves or whatever. I think it's great. <laughs> Wilson Tanner 2 on Efficient Space, um, which is sort of like, it sounds a lot like uh, like early experimental. It's kind of like whoopy. I don't know how else to say it. Like, it's not dark. It's just, it is. <laughs> Thank you. 
the Ore Miner EP, uh, which is self-released and doesn't have a physical uh, copy at all, but it's out there on the internet, and that's really good. Sean, Sean, what are you which, listening to? Well, I've been in town for a week, so I haven't been, like, I have been visiting my parents, so I haven't had, like, my records with me to listen to, obviously. So I went to uh, Savers and bought a bunch of tapes, and uh, I, I have about five in my dad's car, so I've been listening to uh, George Strait's Latest, Greatest, and Straightest, I believe it's called. Uh... And there's a bunch of Christian uh, metal tapes, too, that aren't very good, but I listen to them, too. For that, uh, also the Prince Originals thing, um, and just a lot of Prince in general. Um, because I was also thinking of a Prince t-shirt that I think was at my parents' house, and I was excited for it, and I found it. And you wore it the other day. I wore it the other day. It's small. It's, it's very tight. It's you. pretty small. I bought it in the parking lot. Um, it's small. I'll still they probably it. shrank a lot after you bought it, too. Yeah, it's like nine years parking old. Parking lot at a Prince concert, not yeah. just like the parking lot wherever. Right, it was not just a parking lot, it was uh, it was there. I was there. Questlove was there. Questlove was also there. I forget who opened that one. Mavis Staples That's and it. Esperanza Spalding. Rick remembers, he was there with me. Yes. Um, do you think that Mavis Staples and Prince spoke that night? Or do you think they continued to not speak? Were they not speaking at that point? He just couldn't talk to her, so he wouldn't. He would send her letters. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. That's... He definitely talked about her and how great she was. Oh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. he could do that. I just don't... <laughs> I think that the, st the story goes is that he couldn't talk directly to her. Okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I don't know. That's good. Yeah. You know, you're on uh, music overload. Yeah, it's just it hasn't been uh, my main priority this week, so I just haven't. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be this week. You know, what were you listening to before you left your house? Uh, what was your packet music? My packet music, that Duster box set that Numero put out a couple months ago, uh, is really good. I've been listening to that a bunch. Uh, a coworker of mine got me into that. What's a record that uh, you're sick of, but people you work with keep playing? Oh God, um, I have a few. I have a coworker who keeps playing REM records, and now REM is banned for a little while. Too much? Is it just the same song? It, is all it the like same that song. episode of 90210 where Brenda just keeps playing "Losing My Religion" over and over again? <laughs> it's yeah, but with two records in particular, I forget which one. Is it the is it more recent ones? Because that would bug me. Are they playing just full? Are they playing full records? Yeah, it's full records. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that. Yeah, I'm a little sick of that. So yeah. when they're a three piece? I don't know. Now, see, <laughs> what's the staff there? So how many people do you have on during a shift? Like, generally like six, I think. Six. Okay. About. So, so who gets the final say about what's going on for the whole? Uh, for the whole of the shop, we we all just take turns, and usually things go fine. Um, every now and then, I think I'm probably the pickiest. You're person the hog. There. I'm not the hog. No, I don't put too much up there, but I am definitely tired of a few genres slash artists, and uh, I'm more vocal about it than other employees. What's something that if you guys throw it on, everybody and everybody like who's a customer is just like, fuck this, I'm out. Is there anything that your boss has said, don't ever play this again because it, customers hate this and they leave? No, we're not really. He, uh, one of my bosses, he really, uh, he gets uncomfortable when Black Flag plays, which is weird. Like, he gets, like, really stressed out, but, like, he, you know, we play punk all the time. Is that some sort of trauma? Like... I don't know. I think he's just afraid someone's going to break the stores. <laughs> uh, 
there's not too much, um, really that. There's nothing, there's a very few bands in, like, the hard band, like, do not play list. So. Yeah. It's kind of just, like, you know, if, if there's a bunch of, like, moms in the store, you're not going to play, you know, some obituary record or something like that. Just kind of read the room is, like, the general rule. What's the big seller this past week? Prior to you leaving. Prior to me leaving. Um, I'm not trying to ha- make you track things that you have no... I'm going to call them. No. I don't know. Um, I'd have to think about it, but I haven't really been thinking about work this past couple of days. You're in total vacation mode. I'm vacation mode right now. I've been dealing with a bunch of other Your stuff Your Hawaiian here. shirt is open. Hawaiian shirt's open. Flip-flops are on. Just kidding. Uh... Yeah, do, do you still have a toe fungus? Oh yeah, it's on both those. I no, actually no flip flops ever. No flip flops ever. I actually went to a study last year where they like gave me like some untested medication. Didn't work, but I got five hundred bucks out of it, so that's cool. I got that from richer. I got that from the YMCA when I was like eight years old. It never went away. Yeah, just yeah. wet bathroom. I guess it sucks. It sucks. Here it's real common. It's pretty common. I'm not alone. All right, so your current look is David Koresh. How many people come into the store and say that to you? I get David Koresh comments a couple times a week, I'd say, from strangers and from people I know. You know, it's not just a physical, uh, like a face thing, but it's also your hair is the hair the... sort of feathered in exactly the same way. It's the glasses. It's the glasses. Uh it's, you're in Texas. I'm in you're Texas. In, I'm you're not... in Texas. You're angry. I'm not too angry. Angry enough. So, when you first moved down there, Mm -hmm. I know you didn't plan on working in a record store right away. So, what did you do? Uh, And how did you land at End of an Ear? When I first got there, I was like, I think I want to try something else. And then, I was probably... I took two weeks off to move down there. And then when I got there and was settled, it kind of just hit me like, oh, you have to figure out a job now. And I kind of panicked a little bit. And then... I was like, actually, I kind of miss working at a record store. Let me apply to the one record store that I like the most in town. And I did, and then I just got the job. So I applied there and at a hotel to work a night shift because I thought that would be kind of interesting. Sell records in the lobby. Because sell records in the lobby. (laughs) Uh, And I also got, they offered me that job, but I was just like, I don't want to do that. Just kidding. So I worked at, I got the job at End of an Ear, and then that was kind of it. And I've been there for five years now. I got the job within like a week of moving there. So it took took three weeks for you to realize you had no other life skills. At the time, yeah. But I was still, <laughs> you know, how old was I when I moved there? Just 23, 24? Something like that. So I was 23, so I was like, oh, I can learn something new now. I can still <laughs> learn something new if I want to, but I just don't want we to. We can all learn something new. We could. You nah. Do. Knowledge is the enemy. <laughs> Don't learn Knowledge anything. is the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you taught yourself TV VCR repair, so that's great. Yeah, so so once you got involved <laughs> at End Veneer, tell us about the different uh, like duties and whatever you've done there that, that's different from what you did here, which is, you know... Tell, tell them everything. Tell them everything. Um, they're my first, like, kind of... Well, first I just was doing counter stuff and, like, you know, getting the hang of a new store in a new part of the country, which was pretty different. Like, we would sell a lot different stuff there than would sell here. It's much different, like, customer base. So it took me a little while to, like, get used to that and getting used to, like, you know, the new regulars that were going to come in and just a, di- a totally different way of life. Um, but once I got more comfortable, uh, one of the owners, Blake, he does... He runs, like, a stereo room there with a lot of, like, used, mostly used equipment. And I got interested in that, so I did a lot of just, like, I'd go out to, like, you know, thrift stores and estate sales and Craigslist and all this kind of stuff. And I was, like, constantly buying stereo equipment and learning how it worked and fixing some of it and selling some of it and keeping some of it for myself. And I got into, like, more of the equipment aspect of music um which i still am interested in so that was different than up here for sure um we don't do repairs no repairs 
I'm still learning. I don't really advertise it, but I basically tell somebody like, hey, I might not, I might be able to fix it, and if I don't, then I won't charge you for it, but I probably won't make it worse. And uh, <laughs> I've done a few, so I'm working on that still. Have you made it any worse? Not None that were like, belong to somebody else. Plenty that I bought at like Goodwill, and I was like, oh, this tape deck's probably easy to fix, and then three hours later, I'm throwing it out the window because I hate repairing tape decks. Um, but just for the, because of the belts, or it's just such a pain in the ass. Like stuff melts in there. The belts melt, and then when they do on turntables too, but yeah. it's a lot easier to clean one off the turntables. There's, Sometimes, yeah. there's definitely been turntables where I've looked at where underneath the platter is all of the working parts. So when it melts, it melts into the gears. Yeah, that's no fun. Uh, I've gotten okay at cleaning those because I've had a few good turntables with like gooey belts on them, so I had to like. Take it all apart and soak it in alcohol. Yeah. And just it's basi- it they basically turn into tar. It turns into so. tar. It, it's the chemical. It's not a band, like a rubber band. So it doesn't just like snap, it just melts. And then it's real sticky. And if you get it on your fingers, it's there for like a week. So. Mm. You need that gritty orange soap. Give me the gritty orange soap. Cool. So, uh, <laughs> was that all, all the duties you uh, had? or? No, it was. Uh, also, just I've, you know, I continued to buy used records from people, and you know, used media and stuff like that. So some things sell a little bit differently down there, or a little bit better down there, or a little worse down there. So just adjusting like what I knew to buy up here. To what I mean, to buy down we there. can all make assumptions about what that is, but just tell us, spell it out. What's the difference between? I think someone in Connecticut and someone in uh, the regionality of it the all regionality. is that you're going to sell more country music down. I'm there. going to sell more country music. Uh, also, it's a pretty busy city, so people just have more money in general, and there's a lot more pe- like a lot more walk-in customers. So, you know, before when we you know you'd order like oh maybe we'll get like one of the new Willie Nelson LP or whatever. That's the, maybe not the best example, but. Like the new, like oh, the new Eric Church record. Like maybe we order one at Red Scroll, but there it's like oh, let's get ten. Maybe it'll last through the weekend, and it usually doesn't, and we have to order like a bunch, like you know, a lot more than that. So Mm -hmm. just adjusting that, and um, like a lot of like punk and hardcore that is popular up here is not popular down there. So like a lot of stuff from like Death Wish or you know that general branch of music was pretty popular up here, but I can't sell it down there. It just doesn't go. Um, And just in general, like, the punk scene is a lot different down there than it is up here. So just getting used to that. It's also the difference between a place uh, like Connecticut where people don't necessarily move to. It's not a place that people flock. It's more a place that people grow up. True. So you end up with a hardcore punk scene that is the same people. Yeah four years and years and years versus a city like Austin where there's a heavy turnover of people. You have a constant influx of new people, people leaving. Totally. And more tours come through too. And there's more like festivals and stuff. Like I just missed like the chaos and chaos stuff. Like I moved there like the year after that was happening. So, but you know, that brought in a lot of people and, you know, but you've seen some bridge shows since then. Seen some bridge shows. Um, helped out with one a couple of years ago where it was Iron Age No Warning and Integrity was supposed to play but the cops shut it down right before them but I've seen the video on YouTube I mean there were you know hundreds of people there on a bridge at 2 in the morning and uh, it was great but yeah there's been plenty of bridge shows Um, and just a lot more like clubs like there's a street you know with five different clubs on it all between you know 200 cap and a thousand so just a lot more opportunities for that and everything's closer together so more people would show up generally we'll shift the topic away from you so that way you don't have to worry so much about yourself you want to get into this article i think we should yeah all right so there's an article on billboard that came out july 16th 2019 as of today that is this morning uh we're recording this on the 16th but it's called an endless fiasco uh, indie retailers describe worsening breakdown and getting CDs, vinyl delivered to record stores. And it is about the uh, Indiana-based fulfillment house uh, Direct Shot, 
managing orders for three major labels. We'll we'll link the article uh, off yeah. of our website. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a, the biggest one being Warner Music Group. Um, let me simplify. Yeah, go ahead. So, Direct Shot is a distribution warehouse in Indiana, and the two ones that they mostly distributed to us and indie record stores were Sony and Universal. And it was generally fine. Like there was always a couple problems here and there, but that's just what to expect when you deal with a huge warehouse and they have like robots picking stuff for the most part. And it's just going to happen. There's going to be some stuff wrong. But then right before record store day, which is the worst possible time, uh, Wea, which is Warner, decided to also use them and direct shot took them on and could not handle the amount of you know they couldn't handle the workload so everything got affected from there and it's been going on for months now where you're either just not getting product or it's showing up late if at all or it's just showing up damaged um some of the most like egregious examples is like we got they shipped us like a rush like three lp box set that was just in a bag like not a box it was just in a bag and of course it's all destroyed and beat up and stuff and you know it's a 70 dollars box set yep and that kind of and the, also the refund department isn't working customer service and answering phone calls there 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 is no one to talk to answer for any of this there's no reps at any at any of these companies to be for stores to be dealing with uh as a result red scroll stopped ordering from wea uh in april and since then um our back order and pre-orders have still been showing up uh things that we ordered in april are showing up like as of today in july um which is insane um there if you if in the article they talk they mention the the new black keys record mm -hmm. um which we were affected by as we had ordered uh, a bunch of the indie exclusive color um, and we didn't get any of them for street date and nobody did so it greatly affected black keys uh sales numbers for the week of their of their brand new record and like that's a big deal because that's going to affect yeah, to how a band like that to a band yeah. like that that's going to affect how their tours go it's going to affect how like what their guarantees are like and that's that's like a lot of people's livelihood and it's it sounds like a minor hiccup like people had to wait a week to buy the record but first week numbers are important to a lot of places and especially when you're dealing with things on a big scale like that and to put it on a smaller scale um how it affects the store is that someone's going to come in on the friday that it's released they're going to expect the, their local indie store to have it the store doesn't have it well now they're mad and they don't they maybe take it out on the store and that seems to be the case i mean the article points to that uh there is a conspiracy theory that this might be uh major labels way of squashing indie stores altogether. and i'm not saying that's true or there's any validity to that i think it, the i think the monster's just too big and they decided to put all their eggs in one basket and the basket you know sunk to the bottom of the ocean there was that letter um, that is, if you read this article, the article directly underneath it is the uh, the Sims letter yeah, say, yeah. saying that he, this this debacle uh, is going to destroy some stores. Like, so it's, it's a little melodramatic. But um, I understand but exactly just like where he's coming the, from. The stores that lean heavily on the major label product, this hurts them a lot some are definitely getting affected much worse than others too like luckily we you know we've had plenty of problems but for the most part we've been able to manage and most of our customers have been very understanding so i know it's not as bad for us as it is for some other stores but like i know there are a few in like this you know different part like the south i know i don't want to name stores in particular but where they're just not getting things at all. I mean, there's a list of stores oh, on it? that letter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. And the thing about that letter is, is that that was put out a while ago, and there not it didn't get picked up anywhere. Like there was no traction. I saw it posted in record forums. No one even responded. It just quickly went to the bottom and got forgotten. And I understand that it's not a topic that it like the 
you know, the behind the scenes like business aspect of it isn't necessarily something that people who are record buyers are going to be interested in, but it affects pretty much everything down the line. I mean, straight into production because like these major label titles having delays eventually affects like small like smaller labels trying to press their records and when that's going to happen because the it, you get pushed to the end of the line very fast if you're dealing with uh, the same pressing plants as they are. Try not to use those. <laughs> yeah. In general. <laughs> but uh, if you need a pressing plant, contact us. <laughs> we'll tell you where to go. We can give you a list of smaller ones that cater to the indie gener crowd. Generally don't have backups for things like Record Store Day um, or other major label. And then things. the other thing about all this is Record Store Day and the emphasis that the uh, th like is put on them like you're talking if you're talking about a small indie store in some cases these stores are almost doubling their inventory for the day and they have to put all of their money in advertising all of their money like into this product and there's like, not a guarantee that it's going to show up on time and that was a problem this year and yeah. it's going to be a problem again in November and it's going to be a problem next next spring like it's because there because you have no relationship with anyone at this like on this corporate level you have no one to complain to uh it's it's like feeling helpless like there's yeah it's it's all through website ordering and customer service is web-based as well and if you can get a hold of any one personal they'll just direct you to a web address so it's not the, helpful the the website that they use is also laughably out of uh, out of date oh yeah and oh. they they went from an okay B2B interface site. yeah one of the best you know as far as like major you know distributors go it wasn't the worst thing shout out to secretly canadian for having a really <laughs> good website and probably the most user-friendly secretly distribution they dropped the canadian yeah, that's right. a good couple years ago you'll now. always be canadian to me. <laughs> secretly <laughs> Um, but yeah, they're great. They're great. Um, Love them. There's, there's lots of great ones out there. Love Red Eye too. Red Eye's great. Um, Red Eye needs to get rid of the banner the, at the top of the website. The, It'll make loading smoother. I, the banner is one thing. The other thing is logging you out every five minutes is annoying. Sure. <laughs> Real inside baseball. <laughs> Fascinating. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> But yeah, so like, um, so this is a major thing that's affecting a lot of people. And again, like, this is a blip on the Billboard website, and it's already buried. And this it came out today. So like, average average person's not going to read this. I don't think it's going to even get picked up many more places. But uh, to me, it's an important thing. It's an important topic. And if you care about like the future of records and the future of the music industry, it's something to look into. And you know, just be. Be mad at it. <laughs> like shake your fist at the sky. Yeah. Be mad. Um, but also don't don't be, be mad. mad. Don't be mad if you go into a store and they don't have the Friday release you were expecting because it, it's probably not their fault. It probably has to do with some robot that may or not be macing people in a warehouse. Be, be mad, but don't be mad at us. <laughs> Let me share a story about what happened with our RSD product. So we got an we got an email a couple days before saying that they couldn't guarantee we were going to get it in time for the day, and uh, right down to uh, the Friday before we supposed to have the event on Saturday. Uh, Friday before two o'clock in the afternoon, I get a phone call from a guy saying he thinks he has some stuff for me, and he shows up here in an unmarked van, opens up the back of it, and there's a half pallet of product. He's a private courier, working for his, himself under his own company name and he was contracted out through FedEx or something like that. Did, did but we en we ended up getting there were also birds in the car. I was going to say there, yeah, were yeah, birds, there were birds in the car. There right? were birds in the van and I should have led with the birds but there were two birds in separate cages because they yeah. fight over Pop-Tarts. Something like that. Yeah. What flavor? Uh, I don't know. Pop I have no idea if maybe that dude's listening. But we got a wacky delivery in. on a pallet in the back of a van. But 
so we got stuff the day before, the afternoon before. Other stores got shut out completely, yeah. and then they had to deal with the the backlash from that, and they had to deal with the fact that they already paid for the product and then have to get rid of it after the fact. But like, there's no returns with any of this stuff. So if you've ordered it, it's yours forever until you can get rid of it. And if everything is is pushing for one day, and the people want to get it on the one day, it might not be so easy to get rid of later on. And their response was, "Don't worry, it's cool next week too." But it's, n but it being cool doesn't make it, doesn't mean that there's a customer like to put it in the hands of anymore. Yeah, when you build the hype around one day, the day after is, it's meaningless. Yeah, they're always <laughs> pushing like you know, oh, stock up for Black Friday stuff because you know it's it's it still sells throughout the season and generally, it, I mean, it doesn't. No. The stuff that would is, the stuff so, that would limited is so limited that it sells that out, it sells we out get shorted, and it, we sell out in a day. And yeah, all yeah. the stuff that no one really wants and shouldn't have been made in the first place is it, we have plenty of yeah. if we ordered it at all. The idea behind it is really uh, like pie in the sky where they're like, we'd like this to be sold all throughout the holiday season until, you know, Christmas or whatever gift giving holiday you celebrate and the reality is there's so few of the things of any given thing that like the ones that have high demand will go real fast and it will not be available if, so if you look at the numbers that are pressed on a lot of these things you're talking some of them are as low as 500 and if there's thousands of stores participating there's no possible way for right. everyone to get their order fulfilled so you're gonna get people shut out Right. across the board and I mean there's there's big stores that aren't getting what they're ordering either like I mean Sean's store is one of the bigger stores participating uh, and they're not getting everything they want so uh, I just feel that there's a smarter way to be doing all of this um, but they are not interested in any input and this, no. is, this is generally I mean this has been going on with Record Store Day and you know Black Friday since the beginning but yeah, there's always been pushback. There's always yeah, there's always been problems. But now with the direct shot issue, it's just gotten so much worse. They did mention in the article that they're hoping by mid August everything will be cleaned up. I don't believe it. Um, if, if, it if it's if it's o if it's only been getting worse over the past few months, <laughs> if it's I, taken them from April to mid August, how much faith can that give anyone? Yeah, like it's it's it, I don't buy it at all. It's just pushing back. You know, it's just just giving uh, just giving false hope, I think. But I mean, hopefully, I'm wrong, and hopefully, mid-August everything is lovely and fine. But I'll eat my fingernail <laughs> if everything's fine by mid-August. Gross! Yeah. Don't eat that. You're okay. You're safe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not eating that thing. But yeah, so I I think this is a good time for us to talk about how uh, Red Scroll for upcoming and future record store days uh, are going to be focusing less of our efforts on RSD product. I'm not saying we're not carrying it, but I do believe that we are scaling back. We're going to be more indie focused as we, we I mean, our, our sign says underground music and culture, and that's where our heart is, and uh, that's what we want to focus on. And uh, there are a lot of independent distributors that are that are really coming up with some great titles yeah. every time that there's one of these events. And a lot of it um, doesn't get sanctioned because they only allow for a certain number of things to be actually officially record store day items. Because there's less focus put on those titles, they don't get the, um, the they don't get the push that they deserve um, and the push that those distributors deserve for the items that they're putting forth. Um, I can't think of a great example off the top of my head. Maybe Rick can. I couldn't tell you what's come out. Yeah, it's real it's, hard. so it much. So, it, yeah, it becomes a big giant blur there's when it's like... 250 or so, like official Official titles. ones? Yeah. It's over I, that. I, I, it's definitely it's over that. that. It's, it's like 450. It's a ridiculous... Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that makes more sense, yeah. Um, so, because, yeah, we end up with like 800 titles or something it's not 800 it, it, it'll be in the 500 range though once you're counting the, un the unofficial ones um there are stores josh and sean visited a store today that had 
500 LPs total. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, um, to to get 532 unique items. Like, Even if you were to only order one of everything, yeah, exactly, which That's, would be terrible, <laughs> which would be would, a bad idea, and would yeah. make and people would that. be people would be furious, yeah. Um, but I, I think, uh, I I just think everything needs to be taken down a peg, um, not for just like the sake of the stores, but for the sake of everything. Like, obviously, they can't operate on as big of a scale as they want to. So everything just needs to roll back a bit. Quality, not quantity. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. And, like, and not to say that Record Store Day is a wholly bad entity or anything. Oh, no, it's great. And the, the idea behind it, I think, is great. Um, I just think, you know, some of this stuff gets away from that idea. And and right now, with this distribution problem, this isn't every week issue. Record Store Day just brings it to a head because you're dealing with, you know an obscene amount of product being shipped in one day mm -hmm. and a lot of customers that are you know i mean we had i think over 150 people waiting in line when we opened the door uh, and i'm sure you guys have had probably more than that or around that number this we, we never count we, we take a count. we take a photo I maybe count. i like to count <laughs> i forget what it is but i like to count but yeah like, the line will go out to like behind the whole uh back parking lot to the front of the church next door so like it's significant it's a lot of people and, you know with us there's there's a few other stores in Austin and um, yeah. you know some some people show up and luckily like this year we were it's a little bit different for us than it was for uh, Red Scroll but there was a ministry event coming up where ministry was playing a free show I guess you can call it free and it was like two tickets with the purchase of the soundtrack to the new wax tracks documentary. Mm -hmm. And I think we got like a hundred of those to sell or whatever, or maybe 130. It was, I think it's 130. And uh, you know, we had 130 people lined up, more than that, just for that one item. And then on top of that, you have people who want other record store day stuff. So we had a massive line, mm -hmm. and people coming in, and it's like, oh, you only got, you know, three of the mini Foo Fighters three inch disc or whatever. Like, fuck you. And it's it just sucks. It makes us look like shit. They wish they went to another store, but the casual buyer doesn't realize like how limited this stuff is, and they just take it out on you because they think everybody in line is a flipper. And people were like getting mad at us too for claiming everybody in line was a flipper or something like that. And it's like no. I feel like the flipping thing is so much less an issue than it was the first sure. It years. seriously is. Sean, Sean and Engineer also had to deal with a whole other problem this year where they uh, lost power oh, yeah. during the middle of the it. The store was completely full of people uh, and we lost power for a good hour and a half. So we had to ring everything up on my phone through Square. Um, and that blew. Yeah, <laughs> I to, bet. To, to put it lightly, that blue. Yeah, the power blue. <laughs> do, you have, do you have like a drop? A drop? You gotta edit that in. Do a drop. Sure. Anyway, so yeah. Difficulties. Yeah, and if you are hearing this and you have questions about distribution or anything, just talk to us. I would love to talk to someone about this. I like talking about it too. Um, Find me in Texas. <laughs> I'm the guy who looks like David Curry. <laughs> I mean, stay out of Waco. Stay out of Waco. I don't think anyone would confuse you with anyone else working there. That's like, true. No one else there looks anything like David Koresh. That's true. That I that I've met anyway. No, none of them do. Um, yeah. So, uh, have you had fun in stores in there lately? Um, we had. The, I think the most recent one that I enjoyed, we had Japanese breakfast play, and I think I think we had 200 people there for that. That's cool. That's yeah. a chill record. Yeah. It, Tell it, people how big your store is. The, I have, Josh saw it when he visited, because he visited after me, but I did not see the bigger store you guys moved into. So how big is that place? I don't remember. I think it's like, I don't know square footage. What's, how big is, <laughs> how big is this room? You know? <laughs> I'm really, I, I'm really I, bad at that. I can be completely. It's this wrong. by this. It's this by this. It, <laughs> I think it's like 
I think the building total is like 4,000 square Talk feet. about it and how many people can fit in there. I mean, all right, 200 people is a lot. It, it's the, the main floor can fit 200 people, and it's still like somewhat comfortable. Like you can move around a little bit, but... And we have a back stock and like, you know, employee areas and like an upstairs, which is still being worked on. And we plan on expanding maybe at some point in the building, but 200 people is a lot. Um, we had to cut it off at that point because we didn't want to like have the fire department come and shut us down or whatever. But yeah, Japanese Breakfast Play, it was a great show. She did autograph signings at the end too, which was really awesome. And like, you know she stuck around for like an hour after the show and like took pictures with people and signed stuff and it was just it was awesome it was a really really great in store um i think we have black pumas doing it in store in a few months which should also be pretty big uh they are like a awesome i'm sure that record's doing band. really well for you i mean it's been doing okay here too but i'm sure down there it's doing really well there was like a texas edition that came out and yeah. when you bought the record you got entry into a show at a fairly small club so you know that brought out we sold over a hundred in yeah. a couple weeks so yeah. stuff like that is great and um, you know some bands really get it and like get how that kind of like it just makes them look good too like no everybody wins is yeah, yeah. what it comes down to um, we built like a little stage recently for in stores for you know future ones but we're pretty selective on them because we kind of have to do a little bit of rearranging whenever we have one now, just because yeah. we have LP racks. Everywhere. Are your racks on casters or anything? They or? are, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we just put another one right where the stage goes. Mm -hmm. I just put soundtracks over there now. So we have to move another one too. And it's it's a little bit of work, but even if you know only a few people show up, it's still fun. I like doing in stores. Um, I like giving people an excuse to come out and go to something free. and It's... it's I just like that kind of stuff. I like in stores. Yeah. <laughs> Is anybody else in Austin doing in stores right now? Oh yeah, Waterloo does plenty. They have like a whole stage, and they get you know they get some some much bigger in stores too. Um, I've only been to one. It wasn't even a, a, like he didn't play, but John Prine did like a a radio interview there, and he was he was signing stuff afterwards too, which which was really cool. Um, I mean, it's John Prine, so it was packed. Um, he told some really great stories and hung out for a while and was just generally an awesome person. Um, but they've been around for a long time now, and uh, they've done a ton of in-stores over the years. But I'm not trying to plug Waterloo here. I'm trying to plug <laughs> <laughs> All right, top five stores in the country, go. Top five stores in the country. Matter of uh, fact, scratch that. Top five stores in the world. In the world. In the world that you've seen, that I've that seen. You've seen. Um, Where have you been in the world? I, I've only been to Japan and Iceland. Um, when I, I went to Japan for six days, and all we did was record shop, mostly at Disc Union, because there's like a lot of them. It's a chain, yeah. It's a chain. I'm gonna say that those are the best. Just record shopping in Japan in general is just completely insane because there's just stuff on the floors that. Because in the downtime of U.S. collecting, they were hoarding it all. Oh yeah, so yeah. like, you know, there's they just have stuff in the racks that like, like oh here's like you know, some thousand dollar Bill Fay record just out in the racks or you know, I really wanted like it was kind of like a. Oh, I want like the Flower Travel and Band Satori LP. Maybe I'll find that. Haha. -ha. And a, I found one. Yeah. And just like anything you could think, I found a Neil Young test press of like On the Beach, which is yeah. probably my favorite album ever. Just where else are you going to find that kind of stuff? So I'm going to lump all Disc Unions into <laughs> one. Yeah. I mean, it's a chain. It's a chain. I think that's was safe. was my favorite. Yeah. That's uh, cool. Double Decker and Allentown, I really love. I'm going there in a few days. Um, Jamie's great. Shout out to Jamie. Shout out to Jamie. We've talked about it enough on this show. Yeah. He knows we love them. He, he knows. <laughs> uh, I like Domino Sound in New Orleans a bunch. It's very curated, but it's good stuff. Um, what type of stuff? A lot of, like, international stuff. A lot of African stuff. Reggae, you know. Just all across the board. 
some people might know them anyway from their label. Yeah, they so, do a lot of cool mixtapes too. So like, yeah. I am certainly not an expert in those genres, but I always buy a mixtape when I go there, and it's always great. So even just to stop in and buy one of those $4 tapes is worth it alone. And the fact that they do those uh, makes me love them. So uh, Daybreak in Seattle is good. Glass House is a great store. I bought Typo Negative Bloody Kisses LP there, which I've been looking for for a while. Um, shout out to Alex. Shout out to Alex. Never, I've never gone to that store. So many times as I went to LA in the past few years, yeah. I never went to that store. It's outside of LA, to be fair. So like, yeah, it's a little it's bit out of part there. of the reason. It was a drive, but it was totally worth it. Um, a lot of times when I'm driving across the country too, like I'm not super focused on buying records because I don't want them to melt in the car, or it's just not my main priority, I guess. All right, how many is that? Is that <laughs> No. That's I mean, like if you count four. Iceland as one, <laughs> I'm then count, yes, I'm it's gonna five. I'm going to count Iceland as one. <laughs> okay, so number one, Disc Union, Disc Japan. Union's, Disc Union's are great. Also, oh, I can also say uh, there's another chain in Japan called Coconuts, which is like the, the old U.S. I don't know the, if it's related? related or not. I don't think so. But okay. maybe. I don't know. But it was I mean, great. in different countries, especially back then, uh, you could use the same name. In the copyright wouldn't infringe. Coconut, coconuts but. was always the lowest tier of the chain stores yeah, yeah, yeah. for me. It was. They had. It was like, oh, uh, strawberries doesn't have it. I guess I'll check coconuts, and then they wouldn't have it either because they were across the street from each other yeah. in North Haven. Yeah. I remember same. Going, same with up in West Farms. Hmm. I remember going to strawberries. Yeah. For well, not literally across the street. They were down the street from each other, but still. Yeah. Good enough. There's an, there's a few HMVs that were really good too. I'm going to lump all of Japan into one. <laughs> so anyway, Disc Union. Disc Union. So your favorite record stores are Japan, yep. Iceland, Iceland which I didn't Double really Decker. Double Decker, definitely. Domino. We'll say Domino. That's four. And then and Daybreak. Daybreak and Glass House. And Glass House. <laughs> so there you go. That's that, five. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's more than five. That's like eight. That's like eight, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of Disc Unions. I don't know. Like... I went to probably at least 15 of them. Yeah. Wow. There was one where it was just How many coconuts did you go to? Two. Okay. There can, was, uh, can you send us the picture of you uh, laying next to your hoard from that Japanese? I can. Bye. I'll find that, yeah. Okay, so check for that on our website. <laughs> yeah. Check, check out for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there was one disc game where it was just a floor of metal. And it wasn't like it was like good stuff. So I bought I bought some Cannibal Corpse LPs there, which are cool, and they're all chewed up too. Um, and I like that. <laughs> like by rats? I don't know. Maybe humans. Human by human cannibals. Teeth? They were pretty. They were pretty fucked up. Cannibals that don't understand what they're supposed to be eating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> eating back to life. Do you ever like have a hard time explaining to someone on a record buy that they have an infestation and that's why you can't buy their records? Yeah, they usually don't take it very well either. Yep. Uh, my favorite is getting the calls from the people like, hey, I got a bunch of great stuff here. And whenever someone says that, you know it's going to be junk. And that happened like a few weeks ago. And this guy pulled up in a van just completely full of just, you know, you open it up and you're like, oh, this is trash. And it's all eaten by silverfish and like it's all junk. And he's like, no, just go through the whole thing. And I was just, no, no, just bring it to Goodwill. Or the or the dump. Side note: I didn't know what a silverfish was until I was in my twenties, and then I was locked in a bathroom with a very large one, Oof. and I thought it was something from another dimension. What is this alien? Yeah, in front of I just hate, fucking hovering, I hate just so floating at my float. feet, and I was in the middle of doing two, so there was no <laughs> going anywhere. If it's got more than eight legs, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no. How many legs would that be? How many legs are on a silverfish? Too many. Do they get more legs as they get older, or is it always the constant <laughs> same amount of legs? I don't know. That's a good question. Are those al actual legs? I don't even know how a silverfish works. Is it like, just feelers? I, I don't know if those are just, yeah, antenna of some sort. I don't know what the deal is with those things. Best five like bands them. in Austin right now, go. Boom. Oh, don't ask me that One. question. I don't know. Two. Number one band. <laughs> I seriously don't know. Three. Three. Edit this part out. I don't Four. 
<laughs> Iron Age? Five. I they're if you they're not really active too much, but they're playing New York, so they're it's playing. active enough. I playing gigs. <laughs> you got one. I really I really don't know. Do you even like music? I hate music. It's How good is Towns Van Zandt? He's great. <laughs> uh yeah, no, I don't I don't know. You I, don't know Towns Van Zandt? <laughs> no, just like local stuff. I I just don't I don't know. I don't know what comes out anymore. Tomato or poppy? Oh, Poppy. Poppy all the way. Okay. <laughs> so you never acclimated to, like, really the local scene. You're just hitting all of the touring stuff. Kind of. I mean, to a degree. Like, I didn't get... When I moved, I mean, I was here for so long, and I was pretty involved with the local scene here, and just starting over and, like, becoming part of another one was it just seemed kind of exhausting almost and sure. i just wasn't really interested it's in a it. larger scale because you're in a city it's a large yeah totally it's a much larger scale so i just you know there's there's enough touring acts that come through to keep me busy enough and i mean another reason i moved to is like or i picked that city to move to is like i like going to the movies a lot and they have a really great film scene there so you know at least two nights of the week I'm at a movie. Top five Texas festivals, go. Music festivals? It could be anything. I, just so, festival. Uh, I went to Fantastic Fest last year, which was great. I'm going to say that. fantastic? It was fantastic. Uh, that was my favorite. It was a film festival. Um, I didn't know I was going until, like, the day before I was leaving Iceland. And the day I landed is when it started. So I didn't really have time to, like rest or like prepare to go to that or whatever but like the first movie was the premiere of Halloween and like Jamie Lee Curtis was there and Dan McBride was there and like it was just it was great it was a, a week of great movies and what a combo what a combo I like that movie too it's good it's the third best Halloween after three and then which one one three the new one okay and the rest are kind of I don't know I don't really care about the rest to be totally honest with you Two's overrated. Halloween's your favorite holiday. Halloween is my favorite holiday. That's true. I love Halloween. Do you do you miss not doing full uh, full decoration for your house and you've taken it out on your store? You've been blowing out the budget every year. I blow out the budget every year. Last year I bought an animatronic wolf, used the whole budget on it, and then we made a movie <laughs> with it, and it was a big hit. But then recently Instagram took it down because of... Uh, music copyright really they did oh no okay they took it down and then we just fought for it and then they left it up oh, we didn't okay. really fight for it we were just like hey can you just leave it up and they're like all right whatever it was I mean, you're not real, making money off the instagram, no, we're not instagram money post off it. it was it was the halloween theme song i think just something like yeah, yeah, yeah. dumb background music um love halloween it's a lot different down in that part of the country than it is up here because you know it's not cold it's not cold and it's also not as spooky as it is up here desert's pretty spooky desert spooky but it's not there's more haunted stuff up here because it's older but they've got folklore they got folklore but i mean there's a lot more haunted houses here Top five uh, desert folklore creatures. Tell me about your uh, cryptozoology. Top five desert folklore <laughs> creatures. Uh, I mean... What's the name of the desert Bigfoot? What do they call it? Which one? It's got a separate name. Which one? <laughs> this well, Bob. Bob, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's like, you know... Not the desert, but Legend of Boggy Creek. Boggy Creek Monster. That's in Arkansas, though. He's pretty cool. Close enough. That's Close one. Close enough. There's that really boring but good movie made called The Legend of Boggy Creek. Um, the Skunk Ape, but that's Florida. I haven't been to Florida. Oh, but the Skunk Ape is the one that's, like, mean, right? They're all mean. Not all Bigfoot are mean. Yeah, they are. That's not true. Yeah, they are. No. How many have you met, Josh? How many have... Yeah. He, he, well, he watched Harry and the Hendersons. That's what happened. No, but, you know, on Mount St. Helens, when they erupted, they helped the government clear the bodies. 
Did they? Through the portals, oh, yeah. I didn't know that part. Yeah, I sent you the article when you went to the volcano. I don't remember it. Everybody look into it. Look into it. Rick's not Rick happy about the, with the turn we've taken with this <laughs> Rick, conversation. What are your favorite crypto, <laughs> crypto animals? Oh, here's one. Does anyone ever like be like, oh, you're from Connecticut. How about that haunting in Connecticut movie? Yeah, I've gotten that a few times. I bet. And I'm like, yeah, I used to, my friend lived right near there. What do people think when you tell them you're from Connecticut? What's the number one thing you get? Do people are like, did you go to Yale? No, uh, people think it's like Golden Girls. Is that, the, is that the show? Yeah. That takes place in Connecticut? No. No. Cagney and Lacey? No, I've never heard that before <laughs> in my entire life. What's the, there's another show that's supposed to... Empty Nest, that's the Golden Girls spinoff. <laughs> None of that, them are in Connecticut. That's not Connecticut either. Uh, who's the boss is probably what you're thinking Who's the of. boss is in Connecticut. It's in a, is that the one with Ted Danson? It's the one where he's driving no. down the... Tony Danza. Tony, Tony Danza. Danza. T, uh, it's a different TD. TD. Yeah. He, he's driving down the Merritt on his way to the, the house Yeah. in the intro. Uh, no, most people think of uh, Jackknife. With Robert De Niro, no, that's what I tell them because that took place in Meriden. Shout out to Meriden. Shout out to Meriden. Shout out to Robert De Niro. Meriden has it. Shout out to Vietnam. Um, Meriden has it. Shout out to Castle Craig. Little rendezvous. And little rendezvous. That's derailing. This is derailing. No, man, get back to it. Tell me more about what people think of us outside of the state. I need to know. Uh, people think that Connecticut's like a very rich place and that everything kind of looks like Greenwich or you know like one of the yeah Greenwich yeah, Dairy in that area yeah totally like the New York suburbs yeah. but um you know they don't they don't realize that like you know we've got New Haven and Hartford and Bridgeport and like places that aren't like that at all everywhere else yeah yeah everywhere else basically um places that are woods places has anyone that ever asked not. you about our pizza um, no. <laughs> I didn't think they no, would. No, they don't ask about the pizza. Do they ask about the birthplace of the hamburger? <laughs> no, but I tell them. <laughs> but Nobody's I, asking, but I'm talking about it. Yo, hasn't that been disproven? I, I think feel like it has. I but think it's been disproven. At the same time, it's... Just, who cares? Who cares? It's, <laughs> it's not disproven. Meat ground up, pushed together. <laughs> who cares? Fucking skillet. They, it's whatever. a sandwich. I gotta tell them about steamed cheeseburgers, too, because that's a real Meriden thing. That's, that's a, a real Meriden, Meriden thing. Yeah. Um, if you're ever at Red School and you want a steamed cheeseburger, there's a place, like, across the street. It's called American Steamed Something. Just go to Meriden. You could. Ted's is right up sure. the road, too. Kayla Mays is there, which I hear is better than Ted's. I don't know. My grandfather actually patented the first steamed cheeseburger like machine they use my brother lost his finger in a machine shop making the trays for the steam cheese really burgers. yep my grandfather cut your brother's finger off that's not how that works <laughs> that's so insane i can't believe that i can't believe he cut his finger off <laughs> that's crazy yeah shout out to kevin's missing finger shout out to my grandfather r.i.p so they think we're rich they think we're rich uh they also don't know I've, they don't know the term tag sale. That's a real regional thing. Yeah, it came up today. Yeah. You just call them yard sales or call them yard sales or garage, garage sales. sales or something like that. But um, but no one around here actually tags all their stuff and prices it. You have to ask about every individual item. Yeah, totally. So everybody around here has got to stop slacking. If they want to have tag sales, they got to use tags and get some prices on some shit. Rip them off all the mattresses. Put yep. them on your stuff. Yep. <laughs> If you're going to call it a tag sale, you better have some tags. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if it's a color-coded system, like red dots are two bucks, whatever. Like, something like that's cool. But just, like, give me a heads up when I'm walking into a place of what, what's what. Couldn't I'm, agree more. I might buy your junk. Might buy your junk. I collect Moses bottles. <laughs> if anybody's got them, bring them to me. He bought one this week. I saw it. I did. They're... They're water bottles that are shaped like Moses. <laughs> how many? How many of those do you have by now? I don't know a lot. More than more than five. Top oh, five Moses God, bottles. Yes. Oh Do you God. care about duplicates or no? Oh, I buy duplicates because they I come bought. in different conditions. Sometimes they have the cap. Yeah. Sometimes they have the label, and they also, for a while, they Poland Spring was also bottling spirits in them. So, so there's also clear ones. There's shorter green ones. There's brown ones, and there's a, there's a lot of. Yeah, Do you have but they're than... all shaped like Moses. It's funny. <laughs> Do you have more than 10? Oh, yeah. More than 30? I'm closing in on 30. What's the most you've paid for one? Like 20 bucks. Okay. 
they're relatively common because they used them for like 75 years. Yeah. Or like 50 years. But still a long time. Long time. And if you ever get a chance, go to the original source of Poland Springs because it's a fucking weird trippy place in the woods. It's a marble, Italian marbled room with mannequins in it and a bubbling mud hole in the middle of the floor. <laughs> what it means to be from Maine. Yeah. Well, they thought it had healing properties. That's why they put it in the Moses bottle. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But it's cute because the bottle's got little feet on the bottom. <laughs> Shout out to Moses. <laughs> Shout out to Moses. Baby in a basket and all that. Rick's gone. Rick's gone. <laughs> Real quick, what do you miss about Connecticut? Um, aside from like family and friends and stuff like that, um, I miss the seasons to a degree. Um, I like, I really do like the like architecture here and like how everything's kind of old. Like you know, most houses. I mean, the house I lived in right before I moved out was like built in like like nineteen twenty or something like that. Like. There's just not a lot of that. Um, there's also no basements in Texas, which sucks. I like a good basement. Or less, like a two-floor house. They're pretty rare. Less wet records, though, without the basement. No, not necessarily, because <laughs> now, you know, we get a lot of flooding. So That's true. Everything's going to get wet. We still got garages. We still got garages, and that's where we have our sales. <laughs> Garage sales, not tag sales. Um, what else? Less green. Less green, but sort. I mean, there's plenty of green parts. There's green parts, but yeah. here it's just green. For half the year, yeah. 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 It's <laughs> seasons. Seasons. Yeah. That's what that, you were talking. It wraps about. in. It wraps it in with the seasons. Um, it's just. It's just one of those things that like, I feel like gets taken for granted until you leave the Northeast. It's totally. like. It's it's really beautiful when it's really green and like yeah, it's really like nice. Some like coming to visit in the summer, great. It's beautiful. There's more to do. It's you know fun, but like coming in the winter, no thank you. I love the winter. I don't. I can't when it snows stand it. a good six inches and you get to just drive around into like you have no idea what you're hitting. Just barely. <laughs> when, when you get to drive around and hit things that you don't know what. Just they like are. I'm sliding. Oh. It's not my fault. I'm gonna hit something. <laughs> That's terrible. I just like spinning, you know, because you can. <laughs> Listen, put on ISIS and just. <laughs> uh, I do. I do miss being close to other major cities. Like, you know, I'm Austin is three hours from Houston, three hours from Dallas, and like an hour for and a half from San Antonio. But aside from that, it's a very isolated place like getting out of texas is at least 10 hours from where i am so you know unless you're flying of course but so you know here it's like oh i want to go see this show in new york and i can be there in three hours by going to the uh, train shout station. out to the west haven train station i prefer it over the new haven train station everybody should be parking to west haven uh the one thing i miss the most though is the dunkin donuts man they're everywhere it's great this is absolutely true. He makes me take him to Dunkin' Donuts every morning. It's these. milky coffee. <laughs> Give me. It's true. No, there is a Dunkin'. There's two Dunkins in Austin. I thought it's just at the airport. No, there's there's not at the airport. There's one on campus, which I've never actually been to, and then there's one way up by the Mediterranean buffet, and I'm sure a bunch of other stuff. But I only go up there for the buffet. I think you went there with me, right? Did we go there? The Demasi's. I don't remember. Shout Maybe. out to Demasi's. Um. But yeah, it's not the same. So it's cool that you miss Dunkin' Donuts over all other things in Connecticut. Yep, that's the number one thing I miss <laughs> is Dunkin' Donuts. So what we've learned is Sean Beck's Disc Union and Dunkin' Donuts. Yep. And neck nothing and else. Nothing else. <laughs> Everything else can fuck off. <laughs> nice. <sighs> all right, bye, Sean. Bye. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Sean. Have a nice flight. Don't yeah. I'm, I'm driving. I'm driving back. Have a nice place.